Hello everybody, I am Dr. Farhan Zameed from Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we are here with a very very interesting video and this is on designing and troubleshooting experiments in biochemistry research. Now, this has been divided into two major components. So, it is one is the designing component and the second one is the troubleshooting component. What are these key components in biochemistry research? Let us look into it. Let's dive in. Hello everybody, welcome back. So as the caption says, it is designing and troubleshooting of experiments very specifically in biochemistry research. Now we need to understand how do I design an experiment. Please remember as a researcher, staying focused is very very important. So remember when you are trying to design your experiment, please design it in a shape of an inverted pyramid. So when I start my research, so I have a caption, I have the aim of the experiment which comes at the top of the pyramid and as I go with the objectives. So please remember, if you have a three year project, please design your objectives in, in a number of three. So if it is a two year project, then you should have two objectives. If it is just one year project, then have just one year, one objective. Now many a times what we look into either dissertation copies or when we look into, you know, thesis. So they have, they are just of like, you know, master thesis would be of like the two years or a year or a six months. And there we see that our students would have been designed at least six or seven objectives. So this is, you know, impractical and many a times this can lead into many of the problems when you're actually trying to conclude your research work. So hence it's an humble request. So you know depending on the number of years what you have so divide your objectives with that particular you know component. So if you are into just BSc uh, you know dissertation copy or in six months internship program so I would always recommend to have just one objective and one name. So if it is like a master's thesis so then you have two years then it is two objectives with one name. Then finally, uh, if you are into PhD, it should be three objectives, which normally a PhD will have around three to four years. Uh, so the duration uh, could also be spread across for every year and for every year there would be one one objective and then finally some point of time to actually document the entire work. So please maintain this particular ratio. This will be very, very helpful for you. Now, once you have the design component, now troubleshooting only comes at the end when you have actually results in your hand and somebody from external or somebody as a reviewer or your mentor, they will say that there is some problem in this particular data. I don't feel that this data aligns with the previous data or in, you know, the, 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 uh, the question of reproducibility of the data, the error values or you know, the you know, the error bars are very, very huge. But however, you know, uh, the data is deviating and many a times you end up with outliers. So how do we actually have troubleshooting, especially in biochemistry research? We will look into it in the next slide. To have a proper design and also to understand the tactics of troubleshooting, the first and the foremost important component is you need to have strong foundation in biochemistry and please understand your basics. Now understanding your basics becomes a key important role because many a times we start ignoring our basics. Especially in biochemistry, if you are ignoring the basics, then you know the entire, this would be the culprit and the entire you know research work has been messed up. So it becomes very, very important that you understand your basics and also remember your foundations. Okay, so once you understand this, then in biochemistry, most of the students, they complain about, you know, the calculations. So I understand that calculation plays a very important role. And also this is one of the most troublesome component wherein you might go wrong. Example, calculation of molar uh, so solutions, calculation of millimolar solutions, calculations of osmolality, molarity, uh, all these components can actually play a, a crucial role. So hence it is always better to have a, a, a cross reference to the data what you have learned. And very importantly, you talk in terms of volumes. Let me try to give you an example. Suppose if I want to prepare 5% solution, how do I prepare a 5% solution? Now, remember when I say 5%, so percent is always calculated for 100. So example, if I, if I want to prepare this 5% NaCl solution, so I take 5 grams and then add it into 100 ml of water. 
So this is the normal explanation which has been given by most of the students wherein sir take a beaker of around 150 ml or 200 ml onto it you take 100 ml of water and then you take 5 grams of uh, NaCl you know, of salt and then add to it stir it and then your solution is ready. So this is considered as 5% NaCl solution. Okay trust me my dear friends okay here you have committed a mistake. Okay, so, so again we need to understand what is the difference between a mistake and an error, especially in biochemistry. Now, error is a small deviation from a true value which will not bring any significant change at your end data. This is called as an error. But however, mistake is it brings a significant change in your you know, end data and it deviates from the true value. So it can, the deviation could be either a positive deviation or it could be a negative deviation. And these positive and negative deviation could many a times lead into positive outliers or negative outliers. And remember, the only way to rectify mistake is throw everything and start your experiment from the beginning. So start your experiment from the scratch. This is the only formula wherein you are able to rectify a mistake. Now coming back to understand our molar, so, you know, uh, the 5% the solution, what we need to do is if you are able to, you know, understand my entire story that, you know, we took up 5 ml, uh, 5, 5 grams of salt and then we added into 100, and 100 ml of water. Now if you go back into your primary days or, you know, your your, uh, you know, first standard or second standard, there we had a story of a thirsty crow. Now, the thirsty crow is, you know, there was some amount of water into the pot. There was a thirsty crow which put up pebbles into the water. The water raised and then the crow drank water and then he flew away. But there is a learning in this which can be correlated to the solution. Now, please remember, we have studied from our primary classes that all solids will occupy some amount of space. Okay, so when it occupies some amount of space, please remember, as I told you, you know, that 5% solution, I took 100 ml of water and in this 100 ml of water, I have added that 5 grams of salt. Now, this salt, because salt is solid, it is occupying some amount of space in the solution. So the final end solution is not 100 ml. So it could end up with 102 ml or 103 ml. So the percentage solution, what you think as 5%, the solution has been actually diluted and hence it can go on till for 4.98% or 4.8%. So hence you have missed out with the preparation of 5% solution. Friends, this was the smallest example to make you aware that when, when you write that the solution was made by adding 5 grams of salt in 100 ml of water, the sentence should read in your manuscript as 5 grams of salt was dissolved in 50 ml of water and then it was made up to 100 ml okay using water so the made up to word is a key terminology which will tell that okay it was not directly added into 100 ml but however the solution after adding salt the solution was made up to 100 ml and that is how you prepare a precise solution of 5% NaCl. When I say precise solution, again an important key difference is we need to understand what is the difference between precision and accuracy. Now, let me try to explain you what is accuracy. Uh, my weighing balance, if I take up an example of weighing balance, my weighing balance is a crucial example for accuracy. Because if you look into the weighing balance, the panel says it is plus or minus 0 0.01 gram. So this means to say, you know, if I'm weighing around 1 gram, I can have plus 0 0.01 gram added or I can have minus 0 0.01 gram you know, deducted in it. So this might be because of the technical error of the machine, because of the technical error of the, uh, you know, technician or because of various other, you know, the parameters which are involved in weighing. So, but on the other way, this accuracy, the error, uh, the, you know, the variation will create an error in the experiment and hence it is not bringing any significant change. But however, when I talk about precision, precision is cut to cut. That is that point example for precision would be your micropipette. Now, if I say that you are pipetting around 10 microliters in your micropipette, so it is exactly 10 microliters. So there is no plus and minus business in a micropipette. And hence I can say that a weighing balance is a crucial example for accuracy and your micropipette is a crucial example for precision. Now, with all these things said and done, you know, calculation becomes a very, very important, you know, key component. 
especially in biochemistry research. So hence, you know, you need to make sure that your calculations of all kinds of solutions from either from stock solutions to diluted solutions or from diluted solutions to their usage into further dilution, okay, has to be very, very properly calculated. And uh, it's a humble request, always go on to the paper and pen approach. Never directly go on to your mobile or you can go on to a calculator and then look into it. But however, we always in our lab, we make it a point that all the calculations have been put onto the paper. And, uh, you know, before we start the experiment, a review has been done about the calculation. And then we can start the experiment. As you all know that all the chemicals are highly expensive. And especially when we go for cell culture experiment, uh, since everything is expensive, we cannot have an affordability to, you know, make a mistake. Okay, and hence it becomes calculation plays a very, very important role. Now, this when it has been translated, when it is translated into a pictorial representation that forms a graph. Now, again, understanding graph in a given data or in a given manuscript becomes very, very crucial. So, many a times what we do is, you know, one week's work, whatever we have done, we make sure that we, are, we plot graphs and then if necessary, we will try to repeat it in terms of triplicates as a dependent experiment and many a times we also do a triplicate data of three independent experiments then we know whether our results are reproducible or not please remember my dear friends at that point of time in biochemistry you feel that you are you have been overburdened you have been overstressed but however the data what you publish has been read by the entire world so these researchers if they feel that the, the the things are working out for them at any particular scenario then your citation uh, index, uh, your cross-referencing uh, index will actually increase and this is how you gain recognition at a global level, at a national level that you are not trying to manipulate data, you are not trying to fake data. So whatever you get, okay, you are trying to report it and this is what, you know, people would really like in research. Now, very importantly, let me try to give you an example. Uh, a greatest example for the highest amount of citations which have been received is onto the Lowry's method. Okay, Laudis method of protein estimation has received the highest amount of references because any point of the world, any point of time, if you do anywhere in the world, if you are able to repeat the experiment, you are still getting the, the same stable values. And this is why Laudis method is one of the highly cited, you know, uh, uh, reference paper. Now, again, coming back to the preparation of solutions and especially measuring solutions. So, and other important, uh, you know, component, what we need to remember is never use you know rubber tubing for organic solvents because when you are using rubber tubing or a rubber bulb for an organic solvent as you know it's a polymer and these solvents these organic solvents they are able to melt or they are able to you know uh, corrode the entire inner component of your rubber or any kind of a metal it's always better whenever you are using you know uh, solvents it is always better you use you know the glass or uh, you know borosil or borosilicate systems and the greatest mistake what people they do, uh, especially young researchers, budding researchers in their first year is with their pipetting. Now, pipetting becomes a very crucial component. Again, it is a skill which has to be developed. So please make sure you work with uh, your lab mate, you work with a senior or get mentorship from your guide so that you know how exactly uh, appropriate pipetting which has been done because this can lead into various kinds of variation when you're taking the readings from either any kind of you know, spectroscopy or in any kind of devices. So it becomes very important that aliquoting and fractionation of your sample is very, very crucial. Finally, you should also make sure that every, you know, once in a week, you need to sit with your friends, make a discussion, have a discussion with your mentor, you know, try to refute with the data what it is, you know, already been there from previous researchers and also see that whether your data is trying to align with the previous work or it is getting deviated with the previous work. Now, please remember a negative data is also data. So do not try to manipulate, you know, when we look into the most of the, you know, budding researchers, because they want to get positive data, they try to manipulate and then they end up with a huge amount of mess. So it is a humble request. So every data is data and you are the observer. You are the researcher who is trying to report the data. Now, you should be in a position to know why are you getting, uh, you know, a deviation, whether the deviation is favorable for your hypothesis or whether it is following your null hypothesis or whether it is following your alternative hypothesis. So with all this, I wish you 
to perform very good uh, you know research in biochemistry and these are the key points what we need to remember before uh, we go into the second year of our phd so this is very very crucial for understanding research at a biochemical laboratory and this can help you out for your entire research career wherein once you write, learn the right things you will follow the right things for your entire life so that is how a budding researcher at one point of time they will become a faculty a faculty then later again they will train the uh, other budding researchers this is how the legacy of knowledge transfer will go on i wish all the very best and please remember at biotechnica we make sure that all our internships all our certification courses all our the workshops have been uh, focused in such a way that everybody knows the uh, the, the head and tail is a nut and bolt of a particular you know technique so that uh, they are able to execute in any particular laboratory either in terms of wet lab or dry lab so uh, at biotechnica your your learning is our motivation and uh, keep us motivated so that we can bring many many new products so that uh, the entire upgradation of biology can happen with together and uh, that is how we plan uh, for the next few uh, days so that we can have uh, the best of the best coming to you so i wish everybody to learn either with any of the branches uh, you might be a biotechnologist you might you might be a microbiologist but however having this calibrations learning this stoichiometry becomes very very crucial i wish everybody a happy learning uh, especially with biotechnica and rasayanika all the very best mm -hmm.